so for today we have uh, three sessions first one will be by uh, uh, professor ajay dev he will be covering about electrodynamics part so it is my pleasure in uh, introducing my uh, very old friend from my msc days ajay professor ajay dev uh, he is two years senior to me and uh, he has done msc as well as phd from uh, department of physics university of mumbai and after that he has done couple of post docs and then he joined iit rurki as assistant professor and uh, since he is my senior he has helped me a lot in during my msc days for my studies whenever i had any problem i used to go to him and he has solved he has uh, solved many of my problems and uh, so with this short introduction i invite uh, professor ajay dev to start his lecture hi thank you thank you vivek uh, for the introduction kind introduction so i will uh, start sharing my screen okay good morning all friends uh, so this on fourth day uh, i am going to discuss few concepts on electrodynamics uh, i am audible enough just to confirm yes. okay yes <clears throat> so initially i will just uh, discuss about broad view of the syllabus i will not going to go into all the details of the syllabus but this is just to give you broad idea so actually broadly this is classified in uh, three categories one is electrostatics then magnetostatics and electrodynamics so in statics uh, we study electric fields so electric field when we talk about electric field one can calculate electric field using coulomb's law or gauss law uh, these are not the only two methods there is one more other methods as well which you can use if you need but this is mainly uh, we talk about coulomb's law and gauss law and then electric potential and then energy of charge distribution conductors electric fields in matter and polarization so this is only for electrostatics so most often the given problem can be solved by uh various ways <clears throat> so at this point of time i would like to talk about if you want to calculate electric field <clears throat> what are the different ways in which you can calculate electric field because this is very much important if you know only one way uh that is not uh that is not good when we come when we come to a competitive examinations so the simplest way is to use gauss law yes but to use gauss law Uh, one has to has one has to have symmetry in the given problem if there is no symmetry of course then you cannot use gauss law another way is to calculate potential first if given charge distribution uh, you can calculate potential first and from there you can try take gradient of potential negative gradient of potential which will give you electric field and the third and the most difficult way is to use coulomb's law <clears throat> why i am saying coulomb's law is not so easy way because in its integration we have unit vector so as long as we are dealing with cartesian coordinate system taking that unit vector outside the integral is not a problem but as soon as we go to spherical or curvilinear coordinate system we have problem we cannot really take that unit vector outside the integral so uh, one has to transform uh, okay you can transform the problem into cartesian coordinate system but that is a tedious way of course it can be done okay and now uh, what about potential if we, if we want to calculate electric potential which is second point in electrostatics uh, what will you do okay so if you want to calculate potential you directly use formula directly which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon not integration sigma over r in this case i am talking about spherical uh, shell and sigma over r uh, into uh, into area so that will give you uh, ele electric potential but simplest way again if we know electric field i am talking about only if you if you need to calculate electric potential only you can use by the from the knowledge of electric field you can simply use elect integration e dot dl so problem here is uh, the point here is if you need to determine e where symmetry doesn't allow use of gauss law what will you do the best way is to use the best way is to find potential first 
by the method which I just uh, talked now, and then you take a negative gradient of that potential. So that will give you the electric field. So all the point I'm trying to make here is that there are there are various ways of tackling the same problem, but by practice you must acquire uh, the expertise in solving problem in the smart way. This has been emphasized several times earlier uh, in, uh, in previous three days. Our second part of this uh, syllabus is magnetostatics. Again, so you, you can see the parallel between mag electrostatics and magnetostatics. If the first thing that we talk about uh, in magnetostatics is weiss howard law, like we talk about Coulomb's law in electrostatics. Okay, so th these are very general laws. Then you talk about MPS law, but the MPS law is valid as all of you know, only when there is some sort of symmetry. In case of magnetostatics, we talk about magnetic vector potential and not scalar potential. <clears throat> so when you talk about magnetic vector potential, again, which is vector, uh, vector quantity and it becomes sometimes difficult to, uh, to, to, do, to take the integration. And the finally, it is electrodynamics. So which starts with electromagnetic induction, then Maxwell's equation pointing theorem. This is one part and then electromagnetic waves. Okay, so electromagnetic waves in vacuum and in matter and absorption and dispersion. Uh, these are the topics which are related to all the competitive examinations. Now, fine, okay. So why, why do we study electro, mag, electrodynamics first of all? So in this, for this particular workshop, one can say that objective is to qualify net, gate, set, all these kind of exa competitive examinations. But if you go for research, some of you will, uh, will take up research, some of you may go for teaching. Okay, so in both the cases, uh, this topic is very much important. Of course, all the topics are very important, but this is one of the core subjects. This is one of the core subjects which you will need at most of the places when you go for research. At the present situation, whatever you see around, most of it uh, has some sort of electrodynamics in it. You pick up any, top, any, any gadget with you, you uh, look at household things, most of the things uh, have some sort of electrodynamics in it. Okay, so uh, let us now move ahead to mathematical preliminaries. So this is, Electrodynamics is a course which is intensively depends on your mathematics. But okay, you, we don't really need too much mathematical concepts for it. Okay. So most of it uh, is okay when you, uh, for you if you know the vector calculus. Okay, but when you talk about vector calculus, when you talk about vector calculus, there are three different coordinate systems. All of you have gone through this probably, but I will little. I will elaborate little more on this uh, part because you see you have three coordinate systems, and then we have gradient, divergence, curl, and Laplacian in three coordinate systems. So four, 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 which is gradient, divergence, curl, and Laplacian in one coordinate system, and we have three coordinate systems. So basically, you have to remember twelve formulas. So I don't, I don't like remembering formulas, but it is better to uh, find a trick which, with which one can remember all the formulas. So I'm going to discuss this trick uh, with you. So if you have pen and paper with you, it is better if you write down this, <clears throat> because I do not know when these slides will be uploaded. Okay, so what we know to, for this trick, the best way, of course, it, all of us remember is the differential lens in first, which is written. Okay, let me see if I can get the pointer. Okay, so the first is differential length, which I have drawn, which I have written, oops, I'm sorry. Sir, your arrow is visible anyway, so you can okay. use that directly. Yes. So, the first is differential length in Cartesian coordinate system. Second is, as you can see, the, it is differential length 
in cylindrical coordinate system and the third one is differential length in spherical polar coordinate system so please do not get confused uh, sometime this s is has is is been replaced by rho in cylindrical coordinate system okay but their meaning uh, you must understand in what context we are talking about this okay now once we know this in general i can write dl bar is f du u prime where and g du v, v prime is, this is in any in case of general i can write it where f g h are functions of positions and now if i compare if i compare differential lens all these three differential lens with this i can come up with a table i can come up with this table and this table and four formulas are sufficient to remember all the 12 formulas so even this table is you don't have to really remember this table it's you can do it just in 30 seconds okay once we know this we can write gradient in the following gradient of a scalar t which is function of any general coordinates u v w can be written in this way so if you remember this formula if you remember this formula you will be able to write gradient in any coordinate system when i say any i'm talk, i'm referring to spherical cylindrical and our cartesian coordinate system so that is for gradient what about uh divergence curl so for that i have to consider a general vector which i am taking as a bar which i am taking as a bar and then divergence can be written in this in this way you may initially you may think that this is okay bit complicated but this is not at all complicated so it is 1 over fgh and if you remember the first term remaining two can be written very easily okay so that is 1 over fgh do by do u of gh you see f is not there so gh au so if you remember this you will be able to write remaining two and what about curl curl is again 1 over fgh you see again if you compare it to the gradient sorry if you compare it to the divergence i have 1 over fgh outside and then in inside i have f u again you will get bit confused because i am writing f u cap in cartesian coordinates we always write it is x cap y cap z cap or you prefer i cap j cap uh, k cap but this is uh, in in general one can write it again if you remember the first column again if you remember the first column remaining three col uh, two columns can be very easily written so it is not that you have to remember all the four formulas if you remember the part of the four formulas you will be able to uh, write you can you will be able to get the curls and what about laplacian again laplacian of any scalar quantity t which is function of u v w is can be can be written in this way again it is 1 over fgh and the first term so far remember for divergence curl and laplacian it is always 1 over fgh is outside you have just remember first column or first term with that remaining two terms can be written very easily so try to do this uh, try to apply this to any vector uh, and try to uh, find its divergence and curl or, or laplacian as well for any scalar quantity fine so now this is as far as vector calculus is concerned i'm only touching only small part of it where students find difficulty in remembering these things so instead of remembering if you remember this trick will be helpful for you uh, when time is uh, the concern okay uh, i will talk about curvilinear coordinates again i'm going to all the greater details of it but what you must know you must know the relations between cartesian coordinate systems and curvilinear coordinates so all i'm trying to say is that you must know how r is related to x or how x is related to r r theta phi i mean okay and not only that you must have practice of converting vectors from one coordinate system to the another this is sometime very much desirable okay i will give you one example maybe uh, maybe once i finish uh, the example which i am uh, taking so now let's try to convert a bar which is given in x z y which is x z over y x cap to spherical polar coordinate system the vector that we have is a vector in cartesian coordinate system how to go about it 
So to do this, we need to remember uh, two things. Okay, we have to remember two things. One is how x, as I just said, how x is related to r theta phi, not only x, y, because we have x, y, z all. And what is unit vector conversion of, or how, how can I write r cap in terms of x cap, y cap, z cap? In this case, because my uh, given vector only contains x cap, I am not writing y cap and z cap because that is not required for this problem, as you will see. So when I say I want to convert this A bar into spherical polar coordinate system, so what I need to know is what are its, uh, what is its r component, what is its theta component, and what is phi component. For that, I will do A bar dot r cap. Okay, so now I have this A bar. I have this A bar when I take dot product with R cap. So X cap dot X cap will survive, remaining both of will be zero. And then what I will have, I will have X Z over Y times sine theta cos phi. But then I have to replace X Z Y, X Z over Y using these relations. So that will give me A dot R, you will agree that this is R component or component along R in spherical or polar coordinate system. So you can get this. So now once I have shown you this, remaining two are not at all difficult. So now you have AR, you have A theta and A phi. So just write A bar in spherical or polar, spherical polar coordinate system will be this term R cap plus this term phi cap plus this term, sorry, I, I, maybe I said wrong. So this term along theta cap and this term into phi cap. So that is easy. So why I'm saying it, there's one problem in the quiz I must mention, which deals with magnetic dipole, which is aligned along X direction. So if you look at the Griffith's book, we always, think of a dipole which is aligned along z axis because that makes uh, calculations very simple but if suppose if the dipole or dipole movement magnetic dipole movement are is not aligned along z but if it is aligned along x then you have to find what will be the corresponding magnetic vector potential in such case okay in in such case this is not only one example, I'm taking example because that is related to the quiz. Okay, so in this case, you will need all these mathematical preliminaries on which you should have a uh, grasp, you should practice it. This has been emphasized a lot during past three days that you should practice, you should practice a lot, then you'll be able to do it very quickly. Okay, so now let us move to the first problem. I've selected a few problems from different topics. So the first problem, okay almost always a given problem involves a couple of concepts okay or a couple, couple of mathematical concepts as well mathematical tricks as well so now let us uh, uh, take first problem so problem is very simple i have a plane which is defined by x plus 2y is equal to 5 which carries a surface current a surface charge which is given by uh, this quantity what we want to find electric field uh, okay electric field v over m at this point okay fine so what is big big thing in in this problem all of us know that electric field due to infinite plane is nothing but what sigma over 2 epsilon naught n cap okay so this is very simple but then this is not a plane in this this is not the plane is not defined by either x is equal to zero y is equal to zero or z is equal to zero so this there's a small twist in the problem so how to go about this so i always prefer to draw a diagram whenever it is required whenever it is possible i suggest that you draw a diagram that will give you idea what we are dealing with okay fine so in the queue i just mentioned i need n cap vector which is unit vector to the given plane how to go how to how to find it so this is what i mean that it involves another mathematical concept so now you 
find n cap so i write given equation of plane in this way and at a gradient of this and n cap is equal to plus or minus because to given plane i can have two vectors on one may be upward and another will be downward but in this case one will be probably in this direction and one will be in this direction so i have two unit vectors to given plane of so two unit normal vectors i must say two unit normal vectors to given plane which one should i choose okay now which shall i choose plus sign or shall i choose minus sign what is it which dictate that is dictated by the point or at the point where we want to calculate the electric field okay so but you look at the point this point is below because it is minus 1 x is equal to minus 1 is somewhere here and z is equal to y is equal to 0 which is y is equal to 0 is here and z slightly one unit outside the plane of the slide okay so which means this is below the plane and by convention i will choose it as negative okay so now that once that is done uh, there is nothing nothing is left in the problem okay you just write electric field of a plane is sigma over 2 epsilon not n cap and substitute all these values you see uh, there is problem so you, you can see that i had made a mistake while putting it uh, so this pi which i try to put at 22 by 7 that is not required because you see in the given problem the pi already exist in given solution pi is already there so do not try to substitute 22 by 7 or 3.142 so you have to have presence of mind as well while solving the problem just don't blindly go on solving it so now with this uh, square root of 5 square root of 5 will cancel of course you can do this and the solution is minus 126 pi x cap minus 252 y cap okay so another thing to notice in this case is uh, component of this unit vector is twice the component of unit vector along x so which means in the solution okay by the by the all the solutions have this uh, thing in it but you can eliminate just in case if there is 252 and 400 you will you can very easily eliminate if that has been there you can easily eliminate that particular choice <clears throat> so that is first problem which i wanted to discuss there are two concepts involved one is how to find unit vector and then the simple formula <coughs> sorry so now another problem is also from electrostatics what we have is we have given two conducting spherical shells with one with radius a and another with radius b which is 30 cm which are maintained at potential difference of 100 volts such that outer shell is at ground potential and inner shell has a potential given 100 volts now if the material between these two shells is made up of some dielectric for which dielectric constant is 3 what we want to find the magnitude of total charge induced on one of the shells <clears throat> how to go about it when you read the problem you will notice that what is given is only boundaries and this is simply nothing but boundary value problem so a is 10 at a is 10 i have potential at b 30 cm i have another potential so this is boundary value problem in in spherical coordinate system because what is v is known v is known at two places and to find induced electric charge what will i need what will i need i need to find electric field first and to find electric field first i must find the potential how it varies okay so i will draw the diagram that is as i said i always prefer drawing diagram that gives a uh, proper idea about what we are dealing with so and these are the things which are given so this is nothing but uh, everything from problem now because i have potential which depends only on r and spherical spherical symmetry is noted i will use <coughs> i will use laplacian of v in spherical polar coordinate system but only that part which depends on r 
<clears throat> so again, you do not have to write the whole Laplacian. So which can be very easily solved, which can be very easily solved. You do, uh, you get this. So now in this case, because I, get, I got V, okay, some of you may tempt, some of you may try to find A and V at this stage itself. It's not required. When you take the gradient of V, negative gradient of V, this B will vanish. Okay, and then what remains is only A. So how you can find A, okay, here, you may find A here from the given boundary conditions. Okay, okay, maybe for that you may need to find B, I don't remember. Okay, but this will give you E, which is this way. So now when, once E is known, once E is known, you can very easily find, you can very easily find what is induced charge is. Okay, so now this is very uh, simple equation that we, no, but remember epsilon r is three, so epsilon naught times epsilon r. So you have to remember a. Now, what is constant in this case? Okay, so for given you can find that what is constant r, right? So you have to e is along r cap and da is also along r cap. So you have to take that part of da where r is constant so now you can you can find this so now but anyway you see r will get cancelled so what we remember is what we get is this i will not suggest to remember this formula okay so now this is for spherical polar coordinate system i may have similar problem in cylindrical coordinate systems so how many formulas will you remember this doesn't take more it should not really take more than a, a couple of minutes and then when you substitute it, you will get five nanosec and five nano coulomb, which that means the answer is C. So another thing which you must uh, remember is that you are not allowed to use calculators as far as I know, right? You are not allowed to use calculators, which means you problems are set in a such a way that your calculations, final calculations are very simple. Okay, those are not really involved calculations. <coughs> All right, so now let us move on to magnetostatics. So now this is actually my very favorite problem. I always uh, discuss this problem. So I have two current sheets, uh, which is one, one is located at Z is equal to zero, which carries this surface current. And another is at Z is equal to D, which carries this surface current. And these are separated by distance. Uh, they're separated by, which are separated by two magnetic materials for one, this mu R1, for the first slab, mu r2 for the second slab in a such a way that mu r2 is equal to 3 mu r1. Now the ratio, what we want to find is the ratio a by d for, so that the 10% of the total magnetic flux is in the region uh, defined by this. So how, what is, how to go about it? As I said, I will draw a diagram first, okay. You may think that this is complicated diagram, but it is not because there are too many things in it. You uh, think that this is too complicated diagram, but this is not. Let me explain you what is there in this diagram. <clears throat> so now this is X axis, Y axis. I have set up my coordinate system Z. I have drawn a plane at Z is equal to zero, which carries current K Y cap, which is carrying current K, K naught Y cap along this. I have drawn another plane which is at z is equal to d which is carrying current minus k y cap minus sorry minus k naught y cap which is in this direction so this is along positive y this is along negative y fine so i have two planes carrying current i have defined that the distance between these two is d so for the first uh, for the first slab which is just those are separated by this. So now this A, which has mu R1. So now this is for this slab has mu R1 permeability, and this in this case it is mu R2. Okay. So how to go about it? I want to find the flux. For that, I need to find B. Right? Flux is nothing but integration B dot dA which means I need to find B. So I can find B using MPS law. In this case, I'm just using H. 
dot dl is equal to free current enclosed which is and we also know h is equal to b over mu so with the help of this and with the help of this figure we can find b1 which is magnetic field due to current sheet at z is equal to 0 i will write this mu1 cannot escape you see usually it is mu1 by 2 cannot escape this half is now in this case it is i'm writing two times that quantity uh, you should realize why i'm doing it because i have two slabs in both the case magnetic field is in this direction their value will be same in this case uh, in this part and it will be same in that part so mu1 cannot escape and mu2 cannot escape fine so we have found b1 and b2 <coughs> We have found B1 and B2, but do we really need to use to find flux? Do I really need to use integration or do I need to take integration? No. Okay. Why not? Because I know the magnitude of magnetic field in this in this part, magnitude of magnetic field in this part. I want I will select small section. I will say because this, these fields are uniform throughout the planes uh, in, in space. So I will select this part and then I will select this part. So I'm selecting a rectangular section, okay, with width L, with width L and height D, okay. And for lower section, it is width A and then it is D minus A. <clears throat> so with this i can very easily write equation for total magnetic flux through the loop of length l along y axis so this loop along y axis uh, loop of length along y axis so this phi t is phi 1 plus phi 2 oops what is phi 1 phi 1 is a flux from this part of the loop phi 2 is the flux through this part of the loop. So that is A, which is height of the bottom loop times L, which is width times magnetic field plus height of the top uh, part of the loop, which is D minus A times L, which is width, which is same times this. <clears throat> so now this is, this is phi 1 is the flux through the bottom part and phi 2 is the flux from the top part of the loop. So what, what is given? It is, it is asked that phi 1 should be 10% of the total. So phi 1 over phi 1 plus phi 2 should be 0 0.1. Okay, so when, if you substitute these, these terms in this formula, you will get phi 1 over phi 2 is 1 by 9. And then you can very easily find it. Okay, which, okay this means that phi 1 by phi 2 is 1 by 9 and then you or substitute this quantity in this equation, we'll get one by four. So now that is the answer. Okay, so now uh, this is finding magnetic vector potential. So I'm, you will notice that I'm taking different type of problems. So magnetic vector potential and magnetic flux. In this case, what is given is magnetic vector potential is given, okay, which is A minus S square over four Z cap. So immediately, you must realize that this is a problem in cylindrical coordinate system. And then the total magnetic flux, which is asked, which is crossing this part or this area. So there are, again, as I have mentioned in the beginning, there, there are two ways to solve this problem. Okay. First method won't require you to draw any diagram. Okay. So because we need to find magnetic flux, I will need B. To calculate B, to calculate B from A, this is the formula which all of you probably have identified. And now this problem, this is, I need to find a curl or I need to remember the expression of curl in cylindrical coordinate system. And how I have written A has only Z component. You see it is Z cap. So it has, this is nothing but Z component of the vector. 
so which also again mean that you need to you don't have to take all the components of the curl you select only one component which depends only on z okay a z and then you take and this is only part of the curl in cylindrical coordinate system which depends only on z and that is the reason i'm taking it and then what it gives you is s by 2 phi cap now once that is done what remains is to take integration <coughs> integration over the surface now the surface is defined now this integration this is along phi cap okay and this what is constant in this case phi is constant which is phi is pi by 2 which is constant okay so which means it uh, the vector for this surface is along phi cap and which is nothing but s ds dz phi cap <coughs> or maybe i missed something yeah okay so when I mean, you substitute that you will get 15 by 4 you can check that now i'm quickly going to the second method which depends on drawing diagram okay again b is curl of a this is the diagram this is phi by 2 sorry phi is pi by 2 and all uh, b is pi by 2 s goes from 1 to 2 and z goes from 0 to 5 s goes from 1 to 2 and z goes from 0 to 5 you just draw this loop i'm interested in finding flux through this loop okay so which can very easily calculate so if you remember how to use uh, divergence theorem curl theorem stokes theorem all those that that is what i'm using b dot da is this and this is nothing but closed a dot dl so it, basically what you have to evaluate is closed line integral of a over a different sections okay now over along a and along c they are zero why because my s cap is along z cap sorry my s uh, maybe I'm, I'm sorry uh, our vector a is along z cap okay uh, our vector a is along z cap but along section a and along section c those line differential line elements are along y cap okay so those will not contribute so they, those are along so basically dl is along s cap and yeah dl is along s cap and a bar is along z cap so now that goes to zero so the remaining two you can very easily evaluate by noting s is equal to two for b and for s is equal to one for d segment of the loop so i'm quite sure you will be able to solve this so the point i'm trying to make here is that there are two different ways of solving the same problem so which one is simple and which one is quick that is up to you to decide now if you dis if you practice one method you may feel that okay now this is very easy method that's fine there is no problem you can go ahead with that particular method so now the one problem which i would like to take is a boundary value boundary conditions it's not boundary value problem it is problem based on boundary conditions so i have a unit normal vector uh, for from region 2 to region 1 or region 2 is defined by this and region 1 is defined by that is given by this vector quantity now if h1 is this vector and if h2 is this vector see in h2 x component is not given which we have to evaluate we need to find angles b1 and b2 that they make with the normal okay so you will see that uh, this kind of problem at least this you, you may get this kind of problem but you may not get such kind of values i will explain you why as uh, as we go along because this problem will need use of calculator so now quantities will be most likely adjusted in a such a way that you will not need to use calculator but if you need to get angles such that 76.27 and 77.62 or 70 this you will certainly need calculator but uh, don't worry such kind of problems will not be there this is just to illustrate okay so now what we know we know perpendicular component of magnetic field along the boundary they are continuous 
So if I if I know this, I can write mu one h one perpendicular is mu two h two perpendicular. But which means perpendicular component of h one, perpendicular component of h are not continuous. So now what when I say h one perpendicular, I can write it as h one dot in uh, vector which is pointing from two to one n cap. And mu two h two again the same. So we already know h one. We already know n two one. So that is unit normal vector. This from this you can calculate h two x. Okay, you can calculate h two x. <clears throat> so again, you can when you say this five point eight three three, you will realize that uh, you will need to use calculator. Or, so it is better not uh, this such kind of problems will not be. Uh, there again i must emphasize when i say such kind of such kind of problems by all, by that i mean the values will not be the values which i have chosen for this particular problem values will be adjusted in a proper manner so now because now b is mu h bar which tells us that b1 and h1 or b2 and h2 they are parallel so now if they are parallel they will make the same angle with the normal of course so now if i to, how to get this so i want to find cos theta 1 which i can dot write h1 now this is 12th class or even lower not even 12th nowadays is 10th class uh, mathematics that you can do algebra <coughs> with from which you can find the angle so you get cos theta and then you take cos theta will be cos inverse of this okay So now that is similarly you can find out theta two. Okay, so there's one problem. I have only one problem. Then I will be I will, I will be done. So another problem is on skin depth. Now if you go through the previous year question papers, I have observed that at least one problem is from skin depth or related to the skin depth or the formula which is related to the skin depth. So what is given is we have electromagnetic shielded room is to design so that given frequency okay uh, or the intensity when it is only one percent of the incident radiation with if the conductivity is given this <clears throat> so you see even a natural logarithm of ten is given in the problem two point three which you should uh, which you should probably know but it is nevertheless it is given to help you out. so you know that intensity goes uh, this way so now this is a formula which you have to remember there is no another way uh, derivation of this problem formula probably uh, is not something which is desirable to do during the examination so now from here we can write z is equal to uh, this quantity and given i not over i is 100 so with this what you you also know that kappa Uh, this formulas you have to remember please uh, make sure that you write down all these formulas which you cannot remember and try to solve problems based on those formula you will hands will automatically write the formula without any mistake okay so now all the quantities are given in this case all the quantities are given in this case uh, this is known what is uh, what one what one needs to find is kappa and kappa is sigma which is given mu uh which is because it is room which we assume that it is free space so now that is for which it is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 and omega is 10 to the power 7 over 2 so now once you substitute all this you will get uh, the thickness should be 2.30 mm so even this such, such kind of small thickness is sufficient to reduce the intensity to 1% all right now this last problem which i would like to discuss and that is from radiation and power so what we have in this case is an electron which is dissipated at a constant rate starting from its initial velocity u which is much smaller than c which signifies that we do not have to use relativistic electrodynamics and to to u by 2 during which it travels distance s the amount of energy lost to the radiation so now this is a concept which uh, we know that any particle any charged particle which is accelerated or decelerated 
uh, emits the radiation and hence it will lose some energy so to find that uh, okay you have to remember this formula again a few few things which cannot be avoided okay. so you have to remember this formula and once that that is then what is remain what is what is left to find is a okay so this is power from power i can get total energy radiated at time t is nothing but p times t okay so p times t is this quantity i need to find two things in this case a and t so i have written t as u over t a okay now that is very simple again v over t a is you can get from this v is equal to u minus a t and then you substitute that in here you will get this equation so now a fraction of total kinetic energy due to radiation is initial total energy e over no i'm sorry this fraction of total energy okay so now that is e over total kinetic energy so now this is e 2e over now this is e is nothing but energy radiated in time t due to its deceleration while one half m u square is its total kinetic energy so now that is what you get when you substitute this e here you get this quantity what is left here is a because that a is nowhere in any one of the options so you have to eliminate this a somehow so how to go about it again you use the formula which is s is equal to ut minus half at square so you know all the quantities in this you know u you know t which we have calculated earlier and which is also given that it travels distance s so that s is already there in the in the options so you write a in terms of u and s because those are with these are the quantities which are mentioned in the problem itself okay so you should always try to arrive at an answer which will have quantities which are quoted in the problem okay so one could one can one could stop here as well but a is not which is mentioned in the problem not also in the solution suppose this student have been uh, a multiple choice question but it is if you are asked to quote what is the amount of total energy lost you can you some of you may stop here which is not wrong but that is also not 100% correct because a is the acceleration which is not mentioned here in the problem so you should try to convert all the quantities to the quantities in the quantities which are mentioned in the problem and with that you do some manipulation and you get this answer so now mu not e square u mu not e square u over 16 mu not e square u so over 16 pi mcs so now the answer is d so i am done uh, with the problems so for your reference i have mentioned some books uh, here so the best book at this level is uh, griffiths Uh, there are plenty of problems which will clear your concepts then classical electrodynamics by grainer even electricity magnetism uh, by purcell and morin uh, is also very good book and then these remaining two books are slightly advanced books uh, which if you wish when you are all, when you are done with all the first three books or or when you are done with at least griffiths then i suggest that then you can go to jd jackson or held and marian thank you very much thank you ajay sir we take some questions yes thank you uh, dr dev thank you uh, yeah uh, there are a few questions so let me take you back to the problem on the radial electrostatic potential that is two concentric uh, spherical yes. shell yes yes uh, in that the question is uh, how did you arrive at the solution a by r plus b was it just by inspection or is there some trick involved there so there is no trick you just it is just integration isn't it so if uh 1 over r square do by do r is r squared do v by do r is equal to 0 so if i if i multiply by r square because r is equal to 0 is not there in the problem so i can multiply by r square on both the sides so i what i'm left with is 
dou by dou r is r square. So dou by dou r into bracket r square dou v by dou r is equal to zero. Then I'll take the integration. So that will give me constant b. Okay, and then I can. This is simply nothing but integration of this. This is called inspection. I omitted few steps in between. But basically, it arrives quite easily by inspection. Yes, 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 yes. It can be. It is done very easily. So, students probably who had this doubt can practice this kind yes, of yes. simple integrations many times so that exactly. it becomes uh, second nature. Exactly, it's a very simple problem. Okay. Uh, the next question is about the two slabs problem. Two slabs magnetic field. Uh, right. In that, there are a couple of questions. One is, uh, how did we arrive at the direction of the magnetic field? Ah, huh. so so now I hope um, all of you, all all of the students probably have gone through uh, applying Ampere's law to uh, or to plane, to to uh, to wire, to solenoid. So now these are the symmetries. Which are involved when we talk about magnetostatics. There we, uh, there we use, uh, there we put ampere, ampere in amperian loop, and then we try to find magnetic fields. Okay, so now this is simply uh, okay. I cannot really start explaining all the things involved, but I can direct you direct you to go to a Griffith's book where it is done in two steps. So this is nothing but applying Ampere's law to planes which are carrying current k which is carrying uniform current a k not y cap of any k not any current which is uniform throughout the plane uh, there is also a request to just quickly run through the solution of this problem again from a couple okay. of students okay okay so once we have determined the directions of magnetic field once we have determined the directions of magnetic field due to surface current for the plane which is at z is equal to zero and for the plane which is at z is equal to t you i hope you remember the concept that this magnetic field magnetic field due to a uniform surface current over a plane infinite plane is constant okay in the space so which means the field that uh, the field that this plane will create right the, the field the magnetic field that this plane will create will be same here or the field magnetic field that this plane or the current on this plane which will be there is same here as well okay but you see in the notice what you have to notice is that the surface currents they are the same the magnitude is the same which means the magnitude of the magnetic field due to both the surface currents will be same their directions will be different but their but direction of surface currents are such that within the region of slabs their direction is same so when i consider when i consider this loop a bottom part i have to also consider magnetic field due to slab which is on the top but that will be exactly the same why because i'm repeatedly mentioning that their surface current magnitude of surface currents is same so if you remember the griffith's book if you uh, or the formula which is given in the griffith's book uh, or even you can try to uh, even you can try to apply ampere's law to this problem and try to find out the currents but uh, i suggest that few simple problem few simple formulas just you simply remember it's not very difficult for example magnetic field in in solenoid magnetic field due to uh, current carrying wire magnetic field due to such kind of planes should be remembered it's very simple so now okay coming back to the problem now i have in this case magnetic field will be two times magnetic field due to one plane why two because again the magnetics are same due to both the two times magnitude of the same plane one plane so now <clears throat> this is b1 as i mentioned is the magnet uh, the magnetic field 
in the region z is greater than 0 and less than a which means in this region which is two this quantity is nothing but two times magnetic field due to a uh, single plane okay now because for this plane i have given quantity is mu1 uh, this mu1 and then in this case is three times mu r1 so now mu1 is nothing but mu r1 times mu not times k so mu1 is replaced by this quantity and mu2 is nothing but 3 mu r1 times mu2 in this region now again same situation is there magnetic field due to plane at z is equal to 0 will also be there here so and magnetic field due to z is equal to d plane will also be there in this region so it is nothing but magnetic two times magnetic field due to any one of these planes so now that is nothing but this quantity and then you substitute it in this case once we know the magnetic field it is nothing but the area of this loop times magnetic field b1 area of this loop times magnitude of b2 sorry oh yeah magnitude of b2 because you see in both the cases the magnetic fields are along x cap magnetic fields are along x cap and area vector of this loop and of this loop or or the entire loop is along x cap so x cap okay which i have not written explicitly but that is how uh area vector is so now once we know that so what i have written here okay this is the same repetition of this diagram so now phi1 is nothing but area a times l right a times l is the area of the bottom loop times magnetic field plus area of the top loop times magnetic field so now that is phi1 and that is phi2 simple then what is given in the question i need to find ratio a by t such that phi1 should be 10% of the total so the flux coming out of the bottom part of the loop should be 10% of the total flux so now that is nothing but phi1 over phi1 plus phi2 is 0.1 which will lead you to phi1 over phi2 is 1 by 9 and then you substitute these values or this this quantities here uh, then it's done so you'll get it is 1 by 4 so it is quite simple this is nothing it is not involved it's only conceptual problem thank you sir thank you very much for the detailed uh, explanation there is a question on uh, can you throw light on what is the skin depth what is the physical significance okay so skin depth uh, when electromagnetic waves propagate through any medium uh, basically conductors they will penetrate through that conductor now now when it comes penetration they will penetrate it will not penetrate full but it will penetrate to particular depth now that is what is called skin depth so it will not it will not penetrate uh, entirely into entirely into inside the, uh, inside the conductors so how much uh, this skin depth will tell you how much or uh, how much the magnet electromagnetic waves will penetrate inside the given conductor okay thank you sir uh, another question was uh, if you can go to the radiation problem again the one where the particle slows down and emits radiation right. and quickly run through the solution okay <coughs> so you remember that this problem is deceleration problem which is which says that its initial velocity u is going from u to it's to its half u by 2 okay and during which it, it is traveling distance s so what we have to find is amount of energy lost to radiation okay so actually uh, this fraction it should be fraction of energy lost fraction of its initial kinetic energy lost to its radiation okay so now for that uh, i will start with the power formula so now power power radiated by any charged particle which accelerates or decelerates is given by this formula which i said uh, you have to remember okay 
as at this point of time i don't really remember uh, the derivation of this formula how it easy or difficult it is uh, i am not able to recall it but then i, I suggest that it is better you remember this formula so now because power is given finding energy for from power is nothing but power times power and how much power is radiated in the given time will tell you the energy of the radiation which is coming out from this particular decelerating particle so now that is p times t which is nothing but this quantity times t so i have to find out first how much time it takes to decelerate from u to u by 2 okay u and how how okay there is some problem with it just a second and how to get this u to get u by this is uh, quite straight forward formula it's initial final velocity is u by 2 initial velocity is u and then uh, you find t okay so in that case you get t as u by 2a i hope that is right yes okay u t is equal to u by 2a so now sir just a clarification here for the yes. benefit of students a yes. by itself is a positive quantity that's what you have taken right by convention yes. the yes. minus sign is explicit for the deceleration yes oh. that's correct yeah. because and they are used to we used to v is equal to u plus at <laughs> and uh, yes, s yes, is equal yes. to ut plus half at square the <laughs> minus correct. is because of the deceleration exactly exactly okay okay i'm sorry thank you thank you siddharth for pointing it out because i thought maybe students are I'm, I'm i'm sure all the students are clever enough they are very uh, in this case so they know what is acceleration i use plus because yes but this is good this why i am using minus sign is because it is deceleration that's implicit okay so now then you get t is equal to u over 2a then you substitute this t in this formula okay when you substitute t in this formula you arrive at this expression but what is asked is fraction of kinetic energy lost maybe i have missed that uh, here this the total the fraction of kinetic energy lost is then it's this is the energy which you have calculated here which is lost and th this is its initial energy so that will give the fraction so which is nothing but 2e over mu squared so now what is left here is a to be written in terms of quantities which are given in the problem okay. so now again you use uh, the straightforward formula which is s is equal to ut minus half at square okay now that will give you everything in this problem now is known everything apart from a is known in the quantities which are given in the problem so just simply find a from here and substitute that a in here which will give you this expression okay so now that is one of the options in uh the problem which is correct sir another just a clarification that is the c is there in the formula because of uh, gaussian units uh, or oh. it's there even in si units the power formula itself i'm talking about. Uh, I suppose it, it will not matter in the computer exam matter, because if there yes. is a C in the answers, then it is implicit that they have used Gaussian units. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. but yes. means they will have to remember the formula probably in both cases. Like in, in the both normally, in, in normal, S normally there is only a C difference, but they will have right. to remember both. Yes, yes, you have to remember both. Yeah. And this is, I, I, if I remember correctly, this is one of the problems from uh, the net examination. I guess so. This is such kind of problems will be there. So you have to remember, as Siddharth sir said, you have to remember formula in both the units, or you must know how to go from one unit to another unit. That is the best thing to know. Sir, uh, thank you very much. There is just a last request that uh, the generalized gradient curl, etc., formulas which you showed for uh, the Cartesian and curvilinear coordinates. Right. Uh, is there some source from where they can read more? The explanation, I suppose, uh, they can look back at the video and go through it. Yes, but yes. Is there a source where yes, they can? Yes, there is nice explanation given in Griffith's book, uh, an extra a appendix A. I suggest all the students to go to appendix A of uh, Griffith's book. It is nicely given there. Had I more time, I would have discussed it thoroughly. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. I think that concludes all the questions as such and uh, 
i thank you very much for such a nice and informative session for this